this video is to show the GPS logger software. You see the icon on my screen. I've just double clicked on it. I'm now going to allow my computer to run it. There we see that the software has come up. Go up to the heading line to File F. Click on it. Scroll down to Read. Click on it. Hopefully it'll start getting data from the meter which is connected over here on the side. It's gotten information and one program which is all that should be on there now as I ran it this morning. We will say OK to that. Now we'll go back up to the heading on file F. We are going to save the project. Down here we're going to type log4. And hit save. Now, while we're still working up here, we're going to select config or configuration. And we're going to go to the middle here and clear the flash. The data has now been removed from the meter. It is ready to accept all new material. Here we could have metric readings or imperial readings. Whatever it's recorded in, it will stay there. We have it on one second step, so that's the maximum information you can gather. And then we have UTC minus 8 for time zone. There's not a lot of freedom in selecting the time zone, but I did change it to that. It's one hour off of my current time zone, probably not allowing for daylight savings time. Okay, having done that, we're going to close up here. Now, down here on the right is the information from the flight. We didn't collect any, we didn't select anything above, so I get to go back up, click on this recording, come back down, and there we can see my peak speed was 63 miles per hour for my plane. It was at 702 feet of elevation, and the distance it traveled was uh, 88 hundred feet or about a little over a mile and a half. It was a short flight. Now we'll hit play and see if we get a reading over here on the Google map. We, I always get a green balloon to indicate where my recording started and that's accurate. But only about 75 percent of the time do I get a complete reading of the flight showing the tracking lines. This is one of the 25% where I'm not getting it, and I haven't been able to figure out how to improve those odds. Zoomed in closer. This is the Kingdon Air Park. I'm flying off of a taxiway, part of the club, as authorized. Now, back up here, by right-clicking, we get this box that allows us to modify the tracking line, assuming there is one, to print the map to the left, or to save the uh, printed map to the left as a KML file. Then, after saving as a KML file, we can close this program, open up Google Earth, and see KML um, postings, which are not a solid track, but rather markings along the way of where the track was. That was my demonstration. Now I'll show you one of the ones where the track lines did appear. Here are the track lines going on a trip from my house to our church. Now the return trip. Starting with the church and going to our home.
you can see the track line appears. And now it's ending with the red balloon at my house. Now if I click along the line, my speed was 33 miles per hour. The altitude was 12 feet there. 32 miles per hour gives an altitude reading of zero. Thirty-four miles per hour and altitude of fourteen feet. Thus we see tracking lines and any place along them can supply information. Again though I don't know why I don't get tracking lines on every recording as I'm not doing anything differently.